Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander and today we will talk about ASM1, about Perl 6 and everything else on this slide is a lie. Uh, so firstly I would like to do a kind of disclaimer. Uh, if you heard about metacompilation as in super compilation, don't uh, trust it because it will be a different thing. And if you have not heard about super compilation, then don't worry. And instead, today we will uh, talk about MESA programming, about compile time, and if we somehow combine it, it will be, of course, MESA programming at compile time. There are different op opinions about this topic, like uh, I need to try it, or my kids just love it, or, for example, it is very fun, and it is kind of cool, that's why we are doing it. Uh, but uh, I know that it may sound uh, kind of hard. Uh, and if you are worried about it, then don't worry. We will, uh, we will eventually head to it, but before this, we will talk about a thing from 1984, and we have a problem, we had a problem. <coughs> So there are a lot of uh, definitions of types in programming languages, uh, and I know a lot of them, but uh, to oversimplify things right now, we will just pretend that types are like structures of things we work with. But our computers, uh, of course, they are working with numbers. They don't understand our abstractions. And we have uh, different operating systems, uh, different uh, hardware, and so the bits, the bytes, they are different. And we need to somehow solve it. We want to define some code to write it and then run it everywhere, hopefully. And one of the solutions proposed at 1984, it is uh, called ASN1. It uh, is uh, used in a lot of uh, different fields uh, in space, in your cell phone likely, in your laptop, and it works so good that you don't even need to think about it. So ASN1, it consists of actually two parts. The first part is a generic language for type descriptions, and there are various uh, sets of rules for encoding and decoding those types. So firstly, we have such a nice uh, scheme there. So on the left, you see actually an example of uh, a type described using this ASN1 specification language. So a rocket is a sequence of so some other fields. Uh, we have a name, it is a string, and for example, payload, it is a sequence of uh, UTF-8 strings, and a fuel is an enum enumerated value. And you can define recursive types, you can define a lot of your custom types, and work with them. And then we can describe a value. It is actually an ASN1 uh, way to do it. There are other ways. Uh, so you are saying that your rocket, it has some name defined, some speed defined, and so on. And uh, those uh, scary numbers, they are not scary. I promise uh, it is just a uh, one oh of ways to encode this value into numbers we ca can decode, la decode later. So there are different ways, uh, not just those numbers I shown, and uh, they e there are exist different sets of rules like bare, uh, basic encoding rules, or dir, and there are uh, text ones, for example, uh, to uh, relax a bit, you can look at this quick JSON. Uh, you see that it specifies a value of this name, this speed, and so on. And uh, I was focused on bare basic encoding rules because, well, I was implementing LDAP originally, and LDAP uses it, so I was not sure if I should implement something else. But of course, if you need it, we can add them. <coughs> So how do you implement a support of uh, this ASN1 in some particular language? Uh, basically, you have uh, two common approaches. And the first approach is simply, not simply, 
just write a compiler. So now you have two compilers and you had uh, twice the problems. Your first compiler, ASN1, one, it uh, takes your textual specification, uh, creates uh, abstract syntax tree, and then generates some source code of your high-level language, for example, C. Uh, some may argue that C is not really high-level, but uh, it, I am not sure it is any true. S and then your second compiler, for example, C1, it takes your application code and these generated uh, types and uh, compiles uh, it every everything and then link and your application can work with those types. There are uh, various uh, pluses and minuses of uh, this approach. Firstly, of course, the good thing is that any time you have some different specification to work with, uh, you can just run your compiler and it works. But it creates uh, another layer of indirection. It creates some boilerplates, uh, some sources you generate just to compile later, and uh, it complicates uh, things. The second approach, uh, you can do it in uh, some scripting lang language, for example, like Python. Uh, you can actually write a library which will provide you a type uh, mapping from ASN1 types into your language types. Uh, so, for example, ASN1 uh, int integer, it will be mapped on uh, your, your language name integer. And for example, for more complex type, uh, types like uh, sequences or sequences of, uh, you can use, uh, use classes and then when you need to work with some ASN1 specification, you just by hand en encode your types, uh, deriving the them from this ASN library and then it somehow works out. Uh, of course, uh, it is very easy to implement that. Uh, and it is very flexible, like if you want uh, some type to have a custom implementation, uh, you can just do it because a compiler is not very extensible if, uh, unless, you unless, unless you wrote it this way. But of course, uh, it is very prone to errors and it is harder to reason because you actually lo you lose your specification. It is not compiled anymore, and uh, any time your specification changes or you need to deal with a new one, you need to do it by hand, and it is kind of awful. Uh, so, firstly, in Perl 6, uh, we took, I took the second approach, and uh, we can represent ASN1 types using Perl 6 types. And uh, we have a parser and a serializer for Perl, <coughs> and it works, it does its job for my a crow LDAP model, and it is also, it sucks to use. And so in Perl 6, I thought that we can and we want to do better. Uh, so firstly, I uh, didn't want to generate high level sources because why should we? The second uh, thing is, of course, we don't want to spend our time as an ASM1 compiler because, well, just, uh, just order this thing to do it for you. This uh, this machine. And of course, for user, it should be as simple as possible. So uh, let's uh, look at it from the uh, user uh, side of things. So what uh, the user, what the client wants to do just to work with types and how can it look like? Like, give me types and I will do something with them. It, of course, it is not real code because we have not some abstract types, but types from this specification. For example, ldap.asn, it can be anything you want, like uh, some different file. And of course, in Perl 6, we have use statement, not give me. And actually, our model is uh, called asn meta, uh, not some abstract types. And uh, with this statement, you can just use generated types. So. How can <coughs> it work? Uh, how can it work? And so it uh, turns out that in Perl 6 we have a uh, number of constructs that are executed at compiled time. And you can st uh, stick there any Perl 6 code. And uh, no templates, uh, no macros, nothing like that. And uh, sorry, it was a lie. And 
But why do we need it? I mean, execution has since at compile time, it may sound crazy. And if you look at that, it may clear up things a bit. So from your application, you are saying he uh, take this ASN1 spec and maybe some plugins, some extensions written in Perl 6 and give me types back. And ASN meta uh, does some magic internally and returns you precompiled type definitions and you just work them. It all happens at compile time. So how can this uh, magic look like? Actually, it is a real code. You can check it on GitHub. Just a bit uh, uh, arranged uh, for better readability. So firstly, we uh, read our file and parse it into an a abstract syntax tree. Then we load plugins. And uh, then we create our type pool and actually populate it with types. We compile our types. And then we just export it uh, to any model that uses a ASN1, um, ASN meta. And so, parsing stage, uh, it is just a Perl 6 grammar. Uh, it is complete enough to process uh, LDAP spec because I work at uh, with that, and it is uh, pretty incomplete in other areas. So pull requests are welcome if you need something else. And exporting uh, stage, how do we export uh, things from ASN meta to some other model? Well, it is just uh, the export subroutine you just saw. That's all, nothing more. And now some scary code, but let's be some, but let's be brave and uh, break it down into bits. So firstly. It is uh, not a full compiler, of course, but it's uh, just a, su a subroutine that uh, compiles sequence type. So we have actually type uh, with meta information from our AST and some name. And uh, then we just create using, uh, using Mesa model class how we create a new type. It uh, actually as if you would define a class but it happens at runtime, and this runtime, well, it happens at compile time. And then uh, there are some uh, things needed for ASN1. Uh, we define an order of fields, some uh, tedious and uh, not very interesting co code it is removed. And we have fields in a sequence, so we create an attribute because uh, class attribute is a first class citizen. In Perl 6, you just create it with some name, with type. Uh, you attach it to our new package created. It uh, has accessor. And then you just add attribute. Once again, this add attribute method, it is a meta, mo it is a meta model method. You are doing meta programming just now. And then we add role. For example, we could uh, write class foo does uh, this role as in sequence, but instead we do it with our code. Then we compose this new type and add it to our type pool. So shouldn't be so scary anymore. So uh, in uh, this model, basically, we at the compile type, we create ASN1 com compatible types uh, using uh, meta Mesa programming. Also, I was uh, saying uh, for all this time that Mesa object protocol is uh, like Mesa programming, but actually it is one technique you can use. You can use because Mesa programming is bi a, a bigger area. There are different ways, and uh, you include uh, simple types and complex types and recursive types. It is a hell, and all of that happens at compile time. So you don't need to recompile them. You don't store source uh, source code, and for client, it uh, looks just uh, like people, uh, just like your ASN meta just uh, has necessary types, but it doesn't uh, have them. It has only compiler ones. And you don't need to use ASN bare model a lot, I hope. And so we don't generate high level sources, firstly. Uh, the machine does it for us. And uh, for, you, for the user, it is very easy. Of course, it is not a silver bullet. There are nice use cases for the first approach nice use cases for the second approach. Uh, but if you see some case that uh, looks nice 
to apply this approach I described, then consider it, and maybe at compile time. And Perl is a very handy tool to do so because, uh, because uh, I can't think of uh, any other language you can do it so smoothly. So conclusions. It's the wrong one. <laughs> and conclusions. <coughs> it's the wrong one. And well, meta programming <laughs> it can be helpful, clever, but not complex. And compile time. Code execution, it can be helpful and clever, and Perl 6 delivers. I'm not sure if we have any time for questions. Uh, three minutes for questions. Okay, uh, any <coughs> questions are accepted. Maybe something was unclear, I can clear it up right now. Yep, sure. Um. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question or uh, rephrase it a, a bit because I'm not sure. Um, did you ever thought about um, to, to uh, open your work in a way that it's um, reusable in, for example, SNMP use cases? Oh, well, to write a sum, uh, the, the question was if I thought about open opening uh, this work in a more reusable uh, manner? And the answer is no, because I was implemented LDAP actually, and uh, then I thought, okay, I need ASN1, and nobody did it before me, so I had to implement a minimal subset. But of course, uh, as a generic uh, framework, I think I'm not even sure what can be created here to be generic because uh, in Perl 6 you can, uh, you just write generic solutions. You don't need to do anything special to execute code at compile time. It just works out of the box. I'm not sure what should I put in this uh, generic framework. Sorry, so what? The, the own ASN1 parser. Mm -hmm. That's a thing which is in most times broken. Mm -hmm. But when you have an ASN1 library yep. Yep. which satisfies multiple yep. targets like yep. Perl 6 and maybe mm -hmm. C or C++, uh, with uh, one uh, maintainer who well, does uh, not make the same yep, yep. mistakes again. Oh, well, I uh, understood. So you were asking about a generic ASN1 parser. Uh, well, the thing is, is that ASN1, it is really old, not uh, too old, not ancient, but uh, and there are a lot of mature and really good implementation. There are, uh, they are more complete than my one, and uh, they are better. There are they are approved, uh, optimized for speed. I saw some uh, scientific papers about how people were verifying things, and I just uh, did some ad hoc thing for this LDAP model. But if we want to evolve it into something better, I hope we can, if it will be any helpful for anyone. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, compilation? Every time I'm performing my code, or is that pre-compiled? It is pre-compiled. It is actually a nice feature of Perl 6. So you compile it once, and even that nothing was changed in ASM1 model, 
and it is pretty stab stable right now, uh, you just compile it once. And the other nice thing is, uh, other very nice thing is that if you have two different models that use ASN meta with different files, it will create two different pre-compiled <laughs> versions and they won't, uh, won't be confusing each other and won't uh, pre-compile each time. So it is kind of neat how Perl 6 d does it because uh, some implementers were tortured for it. Okay, if we have any time left, any questions? Okay, so thank you.